Uh, some tiles, some shades. No. Look at that right there. Well, I don't. Don't break them. The leg hook and fisherman suplex. Miss Roberts. For the shit out of you. Dollar giving him money's worth. Wow, what a shit out ball. Hey, quick question. If you are a NASA verified scientist, you know, your work was literally shot to Mars and it was cutting edge stuff. What would you do in your spare time with all the money that you'd earn from, uh, from NASA and, you know, from the various space agencies that use your handiwork? What would you do? job we're starting a band we're going on a world tour mm -hmm. on me private jet and tour buses and um mm -hmm. uh yeah and everybody in the audience is gonna wear t-rex costumes while we play and, <laughs> and that's gonna be the music video that's gonna be the music that's video. awesome all t-rexes in the mosh pits yeah somewhere. i could see that that'd be fucking that'd hilarious be fucking awesome. that'd be like hilarious green here and like a yellow one here and a purple one like that's in the but there's one purple one in the middle that's getting like just pushed around. Absolutely the destroyed. It's getting fucked up. And that's get, the Barney costume. They're in the turbine. They're in the yeah. yeah. I, I get that. And, and, but the, uh, my concert will have zip lines above the crowd, so mm -hmm. there's gonna be T Rexes zip lining above the crowd. Yeah. I was going to say, you know what y'all need to do? You need to play like a metal version of the Jurassic Park theme. Na 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 da 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 Comes out the T -Rex costume. Yeah, he's just like he comes out. He's like, "Holy fucking shit! It's a dinosaur! Are you kidding?" And he makes a dinosaur noise like in here, like. Rah! Yeah. I have, I have a big imagination sometimes, but it's all about having fun. But yeah, if I had that much money, I'd be having fun. What? Well, I mean, honestly, you'd like Mark Rover because he is a NASA scientist. His stuff has been sent to Mars. As a matter of fact, the Mars rover that is on Mars right now is his handiwork. And, uh, yeah, he is basically just... He started a YouTube channel quite some time ago, and he does a little private engineering classes on, uh, on... I forget which app it is, but you basically go on there and he teaches you engineering and all that. And, yeah, he's, he's taught a, a lot of people how to build a bunch of different stuff, but he also is a very charitable person. Uh, passion, he likes tinkering and building shit. Well, yeah, I mean that's some of the some of the brightest minds and the best minds are like that. And also, the biggest heart uh, in terms of Mark Rober was there was this kid who was a huge fan of his, um, got sick, and he developed a type of cancer that was very, very, very bad. It was a one, and I think one in like ten million chance of anyone ever catching this. And he got it, and thankfully they caught it early, and. They did a make-a-wish thing, and Mark did it. He came over there, gave the kid a big hug, and, you know, it was just a beautiful scene. But then, you know, enough time passed by where the kid had recovered, and Mark pretty much, like, uh, did a thing where him and that kid and several others broke the world record for, like, uh, elephant toothpaste, and it was the kid's birthday as well. So that, it, yeah. And he t literally... Elephant toothpaste. Elephant toothpaste, you know, that stuff... You know, it's the uh, dish soap and the uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, food coloring. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you yeah, real I quick. Don't, I, I don't know that one. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. So, they call it elephant toothpaste. It's... Okay. That sounds like something you'd wash a bathtub with, like Ajax. Yeah. Elephant toothpaste is basically oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Yes, yes. Yeah. The big foam thing, and it just foams up awesome. Mm -hmm. That's called elephant toothpaste. And uh, Mr. Beast has done a video where he literally filled up his brother's house oh with God. elephant toothpaste. And guess who he brought in to help him? Mark Rober. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like, everyone has done, like, the world record breaking stuff. Uh, and Mark Rober. This is the video right here. World's largest... And he actually came up with his own formula for elephant's toothpaste that had a super violent reaction. It actually, like, blew up the beaker that it was in. Right, the kind that you have to run from? Yeah, they called it <laughs> devil's toothpaste. And it was amazing. And, uh, yeah, Mark, this is the video right here where he did with the kid. Uh, it took eight months, 150 tests, and a, ton, and a thousand total working hours to reclaim the, uh, the uh, world record. And this is his first elephant uh, toothpaste experiment went tremendously well where he filled up a pool 
filled with elephant toothpaste. Cool. Uh, he did it for his nephews. And Mark Rober is now doing another world record, the domino robot. You, have you seen those domino patterns, like people oh, yeah, knock them those. over and you see the domino patterns and everything? Yeah. It's so aste aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember doing it by hand when I was a kid. We had a, a linoleum floor, and we had this, like, uh, one that had magnets and stuff like yeah. that, and the ball that would go down the like ma like mouse traps. Yeah, I've made a few smaller ones uh, with Legos and other stuff like that. Yeah, they're very hard to do. Um, one little thing, the ball doesn't go the right way or something. And it's and it's, and it's unfortunate. It stops and you're fucked. And you well, reset them all. <laughs> well, it's unfortunate, but at the same time, it's just you know, you you know, you learn. You live and you learn, and you get better, and you become, and you learn from your mistakes. And Mark. He has basically built a world record domino robot, 100,000 dominoes in 24 hours. That's ridiculous. So let's go ahead and get this up on screen, and let's see what Mark Rober's getting into. This is the world record domino robot. Here we go. This is Dom. He's a friendly little robot Hi, Dom. that's super good at only one thing, setting up a butt ton of dominoes really, really fast. It's taken five years to get to this point, but according to our initial tests, we have hopes that he might be more than 10 times faster than the fastest human. So today we're gonna put him to the test going head to head against the world's foremost yes, domino sorry, expert, fair. who unfortunately no, is a mere human. Then we're gonna attempt a Guinness World Record and he's gonna try and- You know, we talked about building a studio. Yep. This is Mark's private studio yeah. that he purpose built for experiments in this. entire awesome. warehouse with a yep. mural yep. of 100,000 dominoes. Oh and for context, God, setting up a domino mural room. that size- Look at that. A team of seven skill builders, one full week. Dom here is going to attempt to do it by himself in 24 hours. Now I know what you're thinking. Big whoop, Mark. Because as a kid, you might have had a toy that looked yes, like Yes! I remember that. The domino awesome stacker. Robot, Kiwico, maybe, that can drop 20 dominoes in a row. So isn't it a bit overkill to utilize an autonomous robot, a half mile of Hot Wheels tracks, and a high-speed robotic arm? And no. I get it, because our designs look like this, where we were just trying to hack a little Roomba when we first tried to tackle this problem exactly <laughs> five years ago. But then pesky details with scale arise. Like, for starters, just how much 100,000 dominoes is. So the robot will need to come and reload at least a thousand times, but how exactly do you reload it? And how would it know exactly where to drop each domino and what color it should be? And how do you make it so reliable that it doesn't screw up once in a hundred thousand drops of a domino. I don't a know. system to reliably tackle issues at scales like this is just going to be inherently super complex. Like 10 times more complex than my automatic bullseye dartboard, which to this point was probably the most complicated build on my channel. Yeah, if you threw it within the vicinity yeah, saw, of the dartboard, the video just, that. oh my gosh, yeah. dude. So after failing Genius off and on stuff. for three years, I was doing a Q&A at Maker Fair, and I told the crowd if anyone wanted to help me with a brutal challenge, to hit me up afterwards. And to my absolute delight, two freshmen from Stanford and a software engineer from the Bay Area all took me up on the challenge. So I hired them, and two years later, here we were. Now before I show you how it all works, I first wanted to put him in a head-to-head -head competition to see how good he really was. And for that, we need the undisputed heavyweight champion on YouTube for all things dominoes, Lily Havish. Lily, you are Hi, Lily. known on YouTube as the queen of dominoes, right? People do call me the domino queen. And for very good reason. With over 1.2 billion views on her hey. channel, you've almost certainly no seen way. one of her incredible mm -hmm. creations over her 12 years on the platform. Yeah, she's so it's good, amazing. she's even got her own line of dominoes you can buy in stores. Okay, so here's the challenge, Lily. I want you to set up like 300 dominoes right now, and let's see how long it takes a human to do that. Okay. Okay, clock starts. Now. I can He's just going to sit there. The if you need me, Lily, just sitting here reading my newspaper. For you kids at home, a newspaper is like a boring iPad made from trees. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's actually pretty fast. That's ridiculously fast. No! Oh, mess up. Disaster. Mess the up. Oh. of being a human. She's okay, Lily, are you ready for this? No. I've seen enough. I actually don't know how to whistle. <laughs> this. I can't whistle either, so I'm in the Really? Same yeah. Bro. Dude, it's not an easy thing. I've tried and tried for many years. Dude. It's, some people. I have four, three, if not four different ways to whistle. And I don't have one. <laughs> My God. Dude, you don't even know how to do the cheek whistle? Nope. Here we go. Here's my whistle. <laughs> 
<laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's a dog outside who's just like, all right, who talk his shit? Who talk his shit? <laughs> but dude, yeah, I've got the cheek whistle, the the, and then there's the uh, tooth, then there's like the tongue whistle. Nope. That that one that one I do whenever I'm just like goofing off. I'm just like, whenever I'm like wanting to whistle seriously, I do the cheek whistle. The, and then there's the then there's the super loud whistle. I call this the tooth whistle. This one the, oh, oh, Someone and then should that peak the mic? Yeah, I know. But then of course there's that's why I pushed it away from me. And then I can also do that without actually like trapping the air. I can actually do it not as powerful though. Just, but whenever I trap air like this, I'm able to do it pretty easily. Sorry, it's all but good. yeah, <laughs> we'll have to have a whistle lesson day one day. Oh yeah, I'll teach y'all to whistle. I will teach you yeah, how the to. Audience can laugh at me the whole time. That'd be actually pretty funny to watch. <laughs> I can see you be like squirming for SpongeBob. You're sitting there just like. <laughs> Oh god, it's okay. Uh, I mean, hell, I'm shitty at playing guitar. I mean, hell, that's a hell of a lot better skill to have than my than my dumbass yeah. knowing how to whistle. I have enough Dominator. To to oh my god! Yeah. Wow, I love the eyes. A good set of googly eyes. Oh yeah, the googly ways. eyes. Like, okay, hello, Neil. Let him down. I suck at dominoes, Lily, but I'm good at engineering, which means Yeet. I'm actually really no. good at dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> we even showed off. The dominator double stacked the middle row for you. That is impressive. <laughs> that is seriously impressive. This technique of laying down a tile of 300 dominoes at once was really the key that helped us crack the scale and reliability issues. And it's probably my favorite part about the Dominator. Besides his wiggly tail, of course. Here's Josh oh, to explain more. Seriously, so had to throw in more? funnels here, which allows us to drop all 300 dominoes all at once. And the mechanism that drops those into the top of this tray, we'll show that in just a second. And if we remove these funnels here, we can see that the dominoes are precisely placed in their locations. This allows us to place 300 dominoes exactly where we want them all at once. And they don't fall out because of what we call the connect four mechanism under here. But if we trigger the servo, then it slides that connect four tray over and drops them all at once, making for some gratuitous, beautiful slow-mo shots. Oh. I love it. I love it so much. That's amazing. I love it. Oh, 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 I saw an error. Hello. Yep. It's, uh, I guarantee you, this is just a little oversight. You know, these things, you know, take take time and they take yeah. precise, you know, precision. Plus, these here didn't release. Like, they're all releasing at different intervals. Uh, it's yeah, because, okay. you know, it's because gravity affecting them all differently at different times. Yeah, but it gives enough time to hold them there when they drop. So that's true. Because yeah. that's a high drop. And so what they were doing was really cool. Like putting Obviously, it on the dropping floor. from that height wouldn't be effective. So we lower the whole platform down on this ball screw then set them right on the floor, which turned out to be incredibly reliable. So Dom took the W in round one, but now it's time for the endurance round. Okay, first one to 10,000 dominoes wins. Lily, you ready? I'm ready. Dominator, you ready? Start. It's not even fair. No, it isn't. I'm like, nah, I'm not doing this. Oh my God. Come wow. on, Lily. I already failed. That's great. You got this, Lily. And to Lily's credit, she was actually insanely fast. Just not, you know, robot fast. That's so the unfair. unfortunate, uh, yeah. So unfair. On top of that, she had to handle a very large distraction with the emotional maturity of a nine-year-old. <laughs> uh, I've yeah. got that Nerf gun. I think I'm doing pretty good. Shut up, Mark. <laughs> You're doing very good for a human, I'll give you that. Oh, dude, oh no! Oh, Mark, no! Oh, they are. They're really cool. Get out. Get away, Mark. 
That feels so much faster than it probably looks. My buddy's got Absolutely an attachment that goes on a one Tired. wheel. On the huh? back, it's got an attachment that goes on a one wheel. You sit in it, and it connects to the one wheel. And oh, those things no. can hit like 40 miles an hour. Yeah. And But the back of it's not actually turning. You just slide. So, like, you be going, and then you turn that damn thing, and it's <laughs> You, you're drifting, basically. Yeah, you could you could die on that. Thing. Oh, dude, uh, I, I was gonna say a friend of mine had a go kart. Friend of mine had a go kart back when I was a kid, and it was one of those like good off roading ones. Mm -hmm. And his dad like beefed up the engine. Oh yeah. And I was just and I was just like, because his dad was a, a pretty good like car uh, car engineer, and uh, you know mechanic. Sorry. But uh, he basically engineered it to where that thing was ridiculously fast. And he just, we got in there, and then uh, all of a sudden just, <laughs> just, it blew your hair back. And so while Lily's output slowed down considerably, Dom's did not. And I should mention, we sometimes call him Dom, but that's just short for his legal birth name, which as noted before, is Dominator. Cause you know, like Domino, Dominator. Whatever, it all works. I'm gonna head to the bathroom. Oh, Lily has to go to the bathroom. I'm human, right? She's human. Dominator, do you have to go to the bathroom? Didn't think so. <laughs> Nonchalantly just. 9,000 perfectly laid dominoes in a little over two hours. Actually, 9,001. We got a bonus domino out there in the middle of this oh, field. God. It may or may not have been on purpose, but now we can say it's actually over 9,000. It was a pretty clear result, and Lily, of course, was gracious in her defeat to the machine overlords. So all that was left to do now was to knock him down. Oh. <laughs> so satisfying. So satisfying. So we went head to head Get out of my the head, Mark. foremost domino expert and came out on top. And now it's time for the real challenge, to attempt a Guinness World Record and see how quickly we can fill this entire room with a mural of over 100,000 dominoes. All right, buddy, you got the game plan. Now you just gotta get out there and execute. <laughs> Godspeed, little fella. Godspeed. You got this, Dom. 300 dominoes down, 102,000 left to go. I love how he's syncing up the, the drop with the music. So we're about six hours in, but more importantly, we just got our first Goomba. This is beautiful. Goomba! Back to work, Dom. And the best part about working really hard for a few years is that the last 24 hours are super relaxing. It's like, yeah, go watch a movie. And with that Let's title go placed, to dinner, come we are at... <laughs> yeah, go out to dinner, you know, go to the bathroom, take a shit, you know, take a shower come back, see it's still going, and just be like, all right, bud. And then you turn the lights off, and then it just keeps going. Officially Maybe. halfway done, with over 50,000 dominoes put down in just a little bit over Damn. 12 hours. And Dom, whoa, easy boy, just showing no signs of slowing down. So this is a good point to explain the rest of the robotic system. It all starts over here with the loading station that Josh and John Luke spent a lot of time optimizing. The dominoes are loaded by color on these conveyor belts, and then a KUKA robot arm grabs them and places them in one of 300 loading chutes made from 2.7 miles worth of Hot Wheel tracks. God, and you could Jesus. load Dom directly with the robot arm, but this is much faster because he doesn't have to wait. He just comes in here to the docking station, and the lower platform slides over, so the bottom layer of 300 dominoes gets loaded up all at once. Uh... We also had a backup loading system using a tray, just in case at any point the robot arm wasn't working. Besides the Hot Wheels tracks, there's a ton of 3D printed parts throughout the build that yeah, we either put ourselves, yeah, or if we were in a pinch, a my friends at Matter yeah. had to help us out. So that's the loader, now how about the Dominator himself? How does Dom know exactly where to go in the room to drop a domino? So we've pre-programmed the route for all 102,000 dominoes, so the robot knows exactly where to go right from the start. Then, as we're driving around, we use these indoor GPS sensors to track the position of the robot so it knows roughly where it is. And then as we get closer to the place the dominoes need to drop, we use these IR cameras that are tracking markers on the ground to make sure the robot lines up perfectly every single time. So the vision from the beginning is that we could set Dom up, we could turn off the lights and leave, 
and come back the next morning and you've got like a full field of dominoes set up. You can work all night in the dark just fine. All right, now how about these Damn. super cool wheels? So these are called Omni wheels and they're awesome because they let you translate it any direction you want. So this is way better than like your car where if you need to move a little bit to the left or right, you have to make like a five point turn. So with these guys, you can move any direction you want to adjust for small corrections in the placement of the dominoes. Damn. These wheels are powered by these clear path brushless DC servo motors. These are like the gold standard in terms of speed and accuracy and they allow us to slide the robot around by even just a couple millimeters at a time, which is super useful when we're trying to make real fine adjustments for placing the dominoes down. Now, obviously, that's just the uppermost tip of the iceberg tip, but Dom's brain is over 14,000 lines of code, all from scratch. So if you want to go way deeper into the technical details, 14, I'll put a link in the description where Alex put it all in one spot. Now right. back to finishing right. the second half. I was going to say, if Mark does not give him at least a good chunk of change pre, oh, you know, yeah. pre-building that, or this video, which, here's the thing, Mark Rober's videos average a shit ton of views. It's just like, uh, yeah, the one right here from two months ago, 34 million views. He makes bank on YouTube, and he's very uh, family friendly, much unlike us. We are not family friendly. <laughs> We're not. I mean, let's just be honest. Child's not learn a few new uh, curse words. Yeah. Or might learn how to swear in uh, in Pig Latin. Okay, ooh yeah, itch bay. So the Dominator has been running just under 24 hours. And this is a bit of a momentous tile here. Last one, right? It's a me, Mario. Oh no. Damn it. Super Domino Brothers. 102,300 dominoes are on the floor successfully. This is the last 300. I think this is a moment. You guys get back over here. Yep. Josh and Alex, let's observe it. Don't blow this, Dom. You got it, buddy. Finish strong. Hey! We got it! Just over 24 hours to lay all the dominoes, gentlemen. It feels really fulfilling as an engineer to see the design process yield results like this. And speaking of the engineering design process, my month-long creative engineering course where is. I teach this process and where you watch me make three builds from scratch and you make three creative builds of your own is once again open for enrollment for a bonus summer session right now. So go to monthly.com slash Mark Rober or use the link monthly, in the video description the and I'll see it. you in class. So now with everything set up, the final critical step was to knock him down. You can see John loading in the Mario pipes because they were going to be our trigger mechanism. Oh the way my that gosh. works is we've got four Hot Wheel cars glued to the bottom of this platform that rides in these parallel Hot Wheels tracks. Then you slap <laughs> a green sliding shell on top and a motor at the end pulls That's the car awesome. along the tracks with a string. Then the shell contacts the lever arm at each pipe like this, which causes them to roll forward down the ramp, hopefully into the dominoes. Okay, now I'm nervous. <laughs> I wasn't now you're nervous. nervous. Now Come on, nervous. Mark. Okay. Three, two, one, go. <gasps> One. <laughs> yes, two, three, four, five. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, I see a row that didn't go down. I see several rows. Got it! Woo! Yes! Awesome. No, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. That is more than impressive, dude. That's amazing. Look at that. Look at Whoa. that. Oh, my gosh. And in the end, Dom was 50 times faster than a skilled domino builder, and he got himself a world record to show for it. Although, to be fair to us organisms, it was in the oh, non-human category. Wow. And at that point, after five years, we were just so relieved to be done, we got a little carried away celebrating the champ with an appropriate send-off. Five years, dude. Five years working on this thing. Jesus. 
Dude. Oh. Six-year-old me would be so stoked to know that I would eventually build a robot that could set up all the dominoes for me. So if you want the same feeling of making things with your hands to do cool things, but you don't want to wait 35 years, then my friends at KiwiCo have got the answer. Ah. Uh. This is an actual mini version of the Dom I designed together with them just for this video. I mean, how awesome and adorable wow. is that? He's like the protege, the Dom Jr. They've got an incredible team of designers that work on each project. Nice. And honestly, if I wasn't making YouTube videos, I think I would apply to be on their team. And all the concepts are kit tested, and then it's delivered right to your door every month so you can foster your creativity and make your abilities in a fun and natural way. So for example, for this Domino machine box, inside you've got all the supplies you need to put it together, you've got simple instructions, and then a booklet with more info, like a Q and A with someone you might know. And this is the Tinker Crate line, but they've got eight different subscription lines, each catering to a different age group and topic. So oh, wait, did I see that right? But they've got eight different... Ages 14 to 104. <laughs> hey, what happens if I make it to 105, man? Does that mean I can't do it no oh. more? I guess it's just like as soon as I hit 105, I gotta put my I gotta put my little Kiwi Co thing down. Just like, well, it said I can't do it anymore. So, farewell, Kiwi Kit. Hmm. Well, time to wait for death. So, shit subscription lines each catering to a different age group and topic so if you want to support my channel and feed your brain while having fun at the same time go to kiwico.com slash rover domino or use the link in the video description to get an exclusive offer so thanks to kiwico for being so great to work with thanks to dom and dom jr for just dominating and of course thanks to you for watching what do we do now? We're about to clean it up. Oh, there we go. A cleanup robot. <laughs> A cleanup robot. Yeah. Cleanup robot. Jesus. That's a big old like on that video. It's just. That's ridiculous. Dominating. Ridiculous. Stupidly ridiculous. But I loved it. I mean, that was. That I've was... heard of him before, but uh, oh yeah, I dude. may have seen a couple of his videos before, but I'm terrible with names, so I can't remember people's names. I remember the first time I ever saw him was when he worked with the Backyard Scientist. I remember the Backyard Scientist from so long ago because I remember the uh, salt experiment that he did where he took molten salt and poured it into uh, a fish tank mm -hmm. to see, because uh, there was apparently, he was apparently testing a chemical reaction that happened with salt whenever it was molten and you poured it in water it supposedly exploded and they didn't really have an idea as to why it was it was exploding and he was never able to really figure it out but i remember watching those videos and then i remember watching one it was a uh, we filled uh my pool with over a hundred thousand orbies and i'm like oh yeah i think like i've seen and i'm just like, like yeah, he Wait, just what? does ridiculous stuff like that. Like, and then what? and then he's just like, and this is my friend Mark Rober. He's a scientist, and if you want to check out his channel, here you go. And then I checked out Mark Rober's channel, and now I'm subscribed to Mark Rober. Must have the, uh, the movie Saw 2 with the needle pit. Oh, yeah. So they had these uh, syringes, but they couldn't get, like, fake ones for, like, props. So they mm. bought real cheap syringes, and they literally had a team of people sitting there plucking needles out of every one of the little boxes. And it took them like four days to get oh. a quarter of the way full. So they hired Jesus. like 20 more people to come in there and do that and speed up the process. And it, it still took them like, like an entire Well, I was going to say, uh, you weeks. get a pair of pliers just. Yep. I mean, it was crazy. But you couldn't you couldn't mix them up because you can't have one needle inside there. <laughs> you know? Of course not. But the thing is, they put fake needles on. <laughs> so it was just like, <sighs> God, dude, me. that that scene still oh, gives me yeah. like make like but makes me just the, grab my arms, just like idea. no. That was the idea. That's why that. Oh, uh, has one. Of my, it's one of my favorite traps of the song. Probably the best here. scene in that movie, to be honest. Um, I would scene, say so. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna say it's like the best, uh, you know, trap or anything like that. But like, no. it was definitely a moment to where it was like, oh, probably my favorite damn. trap out of the uh, out of Saw Two. Hmm, I don't know. I really liked uh, I really liked the um, the one with the you know reaching up into the uh, box. Oh yeah. And if you'd actually if she would have actually stopped and thought about it 
and would have just reached up in there with one hand and, and held the the, the blades blade, up yeah. with the one hand, she could have gotten the syringe. Yeah, I, it, could, it could have been as simple as, here, give me my jacket. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It could have been very Stuck simple. Your jacket up in there. But he knew that she would be delirious because of the uh, the poison that was going throughout the house. Yeah. And that was that. That was kind of the, the whole theme of that movie. But, but oh, yeah. I still like the first one. Mom, oh, dude, first one. I will say yeah. this. Spiral is the best Saw movie since the original. Really? The newest one that just came I out. I haven't seen it yet. It, it is really good in a lot of ways. And I knew there were. I know there's. I wasn't big on that one. I thought it was just like. uh, I was just glad the franchise was done at that point. (laughs) Yes, same. And then, and then now they did Spiral, and I'm just like, okay, what are the what the hell are they doing? Saw one, two, and three, but I haven't seen Spiral yet. Spiral's good. Spiral is way off track, but it's okay. It's okay. Talking about tedious things like that, like that was (laughs) yeah. That'll go down to like movie history is very tedious. Oh gosh, it reminds me of Futurama episode. It's just like. Uh, it's like, oh, so what are you two lovebirds off to do? Uh, uh, we're about to go and do some mindless, repetitive tasks. Oh, ho, ho. sounds like a romantic evening. You all have fun. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, that's that's just heartbreaking. It's hard for me to do jobs that are just super repetitive. Uh, when I was a packer at Shears, oh, packer, God. doing bags and everything. Yeah. Uh, your first day, you're like, okay, God, that was rough. And, but and, it's not that bad, but the time crawls so slowly. But luckily, I got promoted very fast when I was there and became a machine operator. And, well, if you work on machines that never work, you always going to be working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're never going to have a not busy day. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was all different stuff every day. It's either, I mean, kind of the same type of shit, but it wasn't the same fucking putting bags in a box type shit. I couldn't handle that. Yeah, I get that. I like <clears throat> So, for me, I, I, oh God, I remember one time I was at a carnival, and uh, it, actually, <laughs> I was there, and uh, I, I saw the mechanic walking around all day long, and I'm just like, where's he off to? And then I looked, and it was a ride that was broken. He gets in there, he fixes it, it goes back to working again, all of a sudden, you know, he starts walking elsewhere, and I'm like, "Where's he off to?" And I got we make the rounds, and there we are back at the other side of the park, and he's fixing another ride. It's just like you're like, there's never yeah. gonna not be a need for mechanics yeah. in this people world. People's like always uh, that kind of goes the whole argument of um, of people back to oh well these robots are replacing our jobs. No, they're actually creating more jobs, but you're just not qualified for those higher jobs. Exactly. You know, the, well, it, it goes from the labor which requires no skill to do certain things and yeah although they're using their physical bodies they don't have to go to like college for years and training and getting that's and true and experience and other stuff that goes along with going engineering but yeah stuff i don't even get into i know the basics and i'm like okay yeah that's yeah i get what you're saying real high tech stuff i'm like no nah, i'll let somebody else do that i yeah i understand uh yeah but mark rober and his world record domino robot he did it good job mark Five years in the making, and you broke another world record. Jesus, wept. That's unbelievable. Yeah, somebody broke that soon. Have you ever seen that guy in India where he makes all the houses by hand? Yeah. That motherfucker, if he got a hold of some dominoes, I guarantee he'd make a man. Probably could. <laughs> Probably yeah, could. Like, I mean, again, dude, there's there's a lot of really talented people out there on the internet, and it's unbelievable what they're capable of. So, again, everyone... Uh, if you want to see more from Mark Rober, click his name in the title of the video. Uh, please subscribe to his channel if you love this video, much like we did. I'm already subscribed, so I can't I can't subscribe again. Well, not with that attitude, but you know how it goes. But we left a like on the video. If, probably going to leave a comment down there as well, so be sure to look for that. And I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Jacob. We'll see you, everybody. Peace out.